Our next speaker is an explorer who is happiest when she is in the mountains. She loves to share her adventures with others in as many ways as possible. Please give a mountainous welcome to Sandy Walker. I don't have quite as much energy as Travis does, sorry. <laughs> Whenever I think of jam, my mind obviously goes to mountaineering, and not only in the sense that there are a million ways, to things, to, ways that things can go wrong and get into a jam. I'm going to share with you 18 reasons why I associate jam with mountaineering, both good and bad, and hopefully by the end of this presentation, you will see it from my point of view as well. To start, there's the views. My tent stays a constant, but whenever I unzip the tent fly, the view is never the same. I see something different every single time. It always takes my breath away in the early morning light. This was the view in Chile after five days of traveling by Jeep, on horseback, and on foot. You'll have to excuse the mess. We were pretty tired when we got there. <laughs> Another side benefit of mountaineering all over the world is the chance to interact with locals far away from tourist destinations. Learning about other cultures and experiencing their traditions, foods, and people is part of mountaineering that I find invaluable. I spent a half hour talking to this of my own mother and daughter in a Bolivian market using sign language. I never learned their names, but I'll never forget them. Mountaineering can take you to the all corners of the world, and I've been lucky enough to explore many far-flung places far away from the maddening crowds, more llamas. <laughs> Travis, you stole my llamas. <laughs> I've seen parts of these countries that few will ever see. In this case, with 80 llamas carrying our gear to base camp, it was obvious that, Toto, we were not in Kansas anymore. The anticipation of going on these adventures fuels my days. This sport takes place in some of the most beautiful areas of nature and wilderness. It's hard to take a bad picture when you're climbing or ski mountaineering. You just have to remember to stop every now and then and take a look around you. This image is in our own backyard here. It's the ghost wilderness area near Wipers. I was there yesterday and got caught halfway up this cliff in a snow and rainstorm. It was quite a jam. There's no question fitness is required for mountaineering. The first 15 minutes are the hardest for me. My legs ache, my lungs burst, and my brain is screaming, why are you doing this? especially when I realize that I have a whole day of up ahead of me. But you soon get into a rhythm. Your heartbeat sinks up with your lungs and legs, and there's tranquility, comfort, and symmetry in this rhythm. Personal challenge is one of the main reasons that people get into mountaineering to begin with. There's the excitement and anticipation of looking forward to the day, but at the same time, you have to face the uncertainty, the fear, and the hardship. In doing so, you challenge your body, your mind, and your soul to leave the status quo behind and accept what the day brings. The reward for this personal challenge is achievement, the feeling at the end of the day of, yay, I did it. These are two friends from Australia who had never climbed before. I took them up the steep face of Ha Ling, which is also known as Chinaman's Peak, just above Canmore. There were tears, there was a whole lot of swearing, and there was fear, but at the end of the day, this is what achievement looks like. There's something exhilarating about standing at the bottom of something and figuring out how you're going to get to the top of it with only the items you have on your body and in your backpack. Whether you're on rock, on ice, or on snow, you have to find a solution using your hands, your feet, your skis, your ice tools. It's a puzzle that goes far beyond Sudoku and crosswords. And by the way, there's a move called a hand jam. <laughs> and of course, there's facing fears. These four people were terrified of heights, but I'm not sure why. For whatever reason, each chose to go on a mountaineering camp for their holidays one summer. <laughs> they were terrified, but they dug deep. By the end of the week, they were able to cross this ridge line and rejoice in that ability, even though they never reached the top of a summit. One was even smiling. You can learn a lot related to leadership skills from mountaineering, and these can be transferred into your personal and professional life. You see people at their best and at their worst as they are pushed to their physical and mental limit, and you need to motivate them to keep moving forward to reach that goal and manage their disappointment if you have to turn back. Sometimes this does not go well, and other times it goes like this. <laughs> This comes from sharing an intense experience, a shared sense of values, and a deep respect for each other. In this picture, after two long, grueling days of walking into an Argentinian hut with heavy mountaineering packs, we found that our food cache was missing. We had no food for the next four days. In the face of exhaustion and hunger and having to abandon the venture, this group chose humor and celebration. At the same time, mountaineering offers a chance to introvert and find a peace and solace. Separated from the nearest person by five meters of rope while crossing a glacier, you have time to reflect on your accomplishment of the day, review the things you would have done differently, and dream about future adventures, all inside your own head. 
that's a lot of alone time, but for an introvert like me, it's pure bliss. Many think of mountaineering as an art form, the dance up rock, the pattern of ski turns through untracked snow, the route finding through untraveled terrain. When you first start mountaineering, these patterns can appear rudimentary or can even be downright disastrous. But with time, they evolve into the movements of a ballerina or the brushstroke of a Picasso. More than anything, what I love about mountaineering is, is that it forces you to leave the clutter of everyday life behind. There's no room in your brain for cell phones, conference calls, to-do lists, or responsibilities. That part of life simply melts away. Mountaineering demands focus, being in the groove. You must be present at all time, or the problems can be obvious. Of course, there are many rewards for being in the moment. Few would be unmoved by witnessing a 4 a.m. sunrise like this high above base camp. This particular sunrise made me forget the torture of leaving my warm sleeping bag at 2 a.m. and forcing down some instant oatmeal. Being in the moment and appreciating these experiences make the hard work worthwhile. You also get to sleep in the most interesting places. You've already seen my tent, which is my usual home away from home. But there have also been unplanned nights out bivouacking on a rock ledge high above the Yosemite Valley. Or this night, when our tents were damaged and we had to sleep out on dog sleds on a cold, clear, minus 35 degree night in eastern Greenland. Most of all, you learn a deep feeling of humility, of realizing that you don't conquer a mountain, it allows you to climb it. The bigness of the terrain and the smallness of you can intimidate many, but for me, it is liberating to realize that I am not that important, and 100 years from now, no one will remember my name, but these places will still exist. With that liberation comes freedom and joy and a lightness of being I have experienced in no other sport or pastime. I would not trade any of these experiences and I hope to continue these pursuits for many years to come. Roughly six months ago, I promised you a connection to Jam beyond being in a sticky situation. And I hope through these stories and images that it becomes obvious why I am jazzed about mountaineering. There we go.